Hello, my name is Theo Quirijnen and I am offering Area Exposure Sales Lead, responsible for network and service exposure products. Today, you will learn about how to monetize your network assets based on network and service exposure. Network and service exposure allows you to create new revenue streams beyond mobile broadband. And it's all done based on the capabilities that you have available in your network. Until now, service providers have sold subscriptions to consumers and enterprises as their main revenues. But with the introduction of high-speed data, we see that enterprises have started to deploy their applications on mobile networks, allowing their users to use these applications whenever and wherever they want. The service providers have responded with higher speeds and better coverage. But mobile connectivity has become a commodity and prices are under pressure. At the same time, we also see that the devices and the applications have become much more sophisticated, requiring more from the network. And that means that a standard subscription is no longer enough for the consumers and enterprises. This means that there is work to be done by the service providers. Customers want more and service providers want more revenue. Today's networks have all the capabilities to improve the end user experience, to allow for completely new use cases or to enhance existing use cases. Take, for example, mobile gaming. Mobile gaming applications require very high quality video and they require short response times. These are capabilities available in the networks and the service providers are able to charge for differentiated connectivity. At the same time, it's also not safe to open up your network as a service provider you will need some form of security and control because you want to make sure that only those enterprises get access to the right capabilities and to what degree they will get the access. The solution lies in the introduction of APIs. The APIs are defined by standardization bodies like 3GPP or market initiatives like Camara. They all provide standardized and harmonized APIs. And these APIs are enabling a wider adoption by the application providers, where still the service providers remain in control of their network. At Ericsson, we have demonstrated multiple use cases and the use of multiple APIs. So let's now have a look on how we can expose these network capabilities from your network. The capabilities are available in your network today and they are enabled in different network functions. But in order to expose these capabilities from all these different network functions, we have to ensure that there is security and control and that we can also abstract the complexity of those uh, network functions, because it's not easy to just integrate with a mobile network. Therefore, we've introduced a number of layers. The bottom layer is the Network API Exposure Domains layer, and that consists of 3GPP defined APIs. In 4G, we have the SCEF, the Service Capability Exposure function that exposes the 4G capabilities. And in 5G, we have the NEF, the Network Exposure function, to expose the 5G capabilities. Examples of these capabilities are the quality of service and monitoring events. They are both available in 4G as well as 5G. The quality of service API allows you to request a better quality for a mobile connection in terms of speed or in terms of priority. And Monitoring Events API allows you to request access to certain events in the network, like a change of location, or whether a user is roaming or not, or whether a device is reachable on, for data or messaging. 
But next to the core network, we also have other network functions in the mobile networks that can expose capabilities or information, like the entitlement server or OSS and BSS systems that contain information about subscriptions. All these capabilities can be exposed with basic APIs. In this layer, we expose the basic standard APIs. But we also need security and control. And sometimes we need to expose multiple APIs in a combination, or even a tailored API for a specific use case. That's where we have to introduce the next layer, the external service exposure layer. This is where we expose sellable services. And these are based also on 3GPP APIs, but also on Camara APIs. And on top of that, we can also create very specific APIs for specific use cases. In this layer, we handle the operation and management. We can create service level agreements between the service provider and application provider. And we can introduce more common services like consent management or ID translation, which are sometimes necessary for specific use cases. And let's not forget metering, because you also want to charge for the use of the APIs. And then finally, we also need to create new APIs for very specific use cases. And that's also possible in this layer. So these two layers can be used to expose capabilities from the network in a secure and controlled way. You can either do that directly towards your application providers or indirectly towards aggregators like Vonage or hyperscale cloud providers. Aggregators like Vonage are adding another layer in between the service providers and the application providers. An aggregator integrates multiple application providers with multiple service providers, so they don't need to integrate on an, integrate on an individual basis. And this makes life much easier for the application providers and the service providers. The integration between the service provider and aggregator takes place based on 3GPP and Camara APIs, and the integration between aggregators and application providers will mainly take place based on Camara APIs, because they are more simplified and harmonized, so they can be used all over the world. The aggregator exposes APIs in a harmonized way on a worldwide basis, but as a service provider, you can still integrate towards both aggregators as well as individual application providers. Let's have a look at three example use cases. The first one is the autonomous car with consent management. This is an example of a use case where we use multiple APIs. Here we use the quality of service API and the consent management API. The quality of service API is needed because when a vehicle wants to drive in an autonomous way, then you need a very good quality connection to achieve that. Next to that, if a service provider wants to share information from a subscriber with an external application provider, they have to check the consent. They have to abide by privacy laws. And that means that when a driver of a vehicle pushes the, the button for autonomous driving, then the network will first have to check if consent was given. So the exposure function first validates the consent in the database. The next step is that the exposure function will contact the policy control function to request a better quality of service. And the policy control function will set the right quality of service for this connection and the service can be started. The second use case is location-based shopping experience using the Camara Location API or the 3GPP Monitoring Event API. The Ericsson Network Location solution provides precise positioning, both for indoor as well as outdoor, and it's network-centric and device-agnostic. This means that you don't need to have any application on your device to be able to send out your location. 
As an example, we'll take a shopping center where a customer wants to buy a book. With the APIs, you can create a geofence request. And when somebody gets close to the shopping center, then there will be a location retrieval triggered. This means that the location of a customer will be sent towards the application of a cafe. That allows the cafe to send a promotion SMS to this customer. And when the customer uses this offer and orders a coffee, there will be another trigger to the verified location API to verify whether the customer is in the vicinity of the cafe. Then the application can confirm that this is the case and the uh, promotion can be confirmed. The third example of use case is the silent authentication. Today, service providers already have the possibility to provide two-factor authentication based on one-time passwords that use SMS. This is, however, not a very secure way of providing two-factor authentication and the user experience is rather poor because you have to manually enter this uh, one-time password. But a service provider has lots of assets of knowing their mobile subscribers. For example, they know the IP connection and they can couple the subscriber identity to provide this two-factor authentication without the end user being involved. An alternative way is to use the secure entitlement channel. This provides a proper SIM authentication with high security and which is also very user-friendly because as an end user, you don't have to do anything. To conclude, network and service exposure allows you to generate new revenues on top of subscriptions. Service providers own capabilities that can enable new applications or enhance existing applications. Network and service exposure offers new network capabilities provided by APIs. You can create value in a secure and controlled way, and you can create service level agreements and stay in control of your own network functions. Aggregators like Vonage simplify and harmonize the integration between application providers and service providers, and they can speed up the process of integration. APIs have a bright future in the monetization of service provider capabilities, provided and supported by the Ericsson Exposure Solutions.